Hey guys, Tequila here with Southern Twain. Today I'm going to be showing you how to list and sell your items on eBay. Are you ready? Great. So I have an eBay store. If you are just starting out, you probably don't have an eBay store, but it's okay. Just notice that some of the things may look a little different until you get into the actual listing. So you're going to look for something that says sell or something that says create a listing. So if I click on this, it's normally, um, it's probably going to take me back to create a listing. So we're just going to start here to create a single listing. Now this area is where you're going to um, give a description, a brief description, a title of what you're selling. So I have in mind that I'm going to list a TB top. It is a coral peach color and it's women's and it's a size extra small. Now these are things that you want to include in your title. When people look for things on eBay, they type in some of those descriptors um, to search for things. So think of it sort of as an SEO, search in engine optimization. So you'll want to lead with the brand if it is named brand. And then I like to tell what it is. So this is a, a top. And then I like to tell the color. And if it's for men, women, or children, and the size and that's it so you go ahead and click on get started so as you can see everything is here that we just typed that's the title for subtitle I don't put anything there they charge you a dollar fifty extra for that so I like to keep it um, the cost to minimum custom label you don't need anything there now the category we're going to take a look and we're going to make sure that um, that top is coming up in the right category because we don't want it listed in dresses or something that doesn't apply so tops and blouses is correct we're going to leave that um, radio button checked now you guys probably will not have this area unless you have a store so I am going to skip that part and I'll just show you what what is what is in there in my store I break all of my items into categories and if this was going in my store I would just simply choose tops but you probably will not have that so I will just well it won't let me deselect it but I'll just leave it that way variations what that means is say for instance you have two pairs of pants and they're different sizes but they're the exact same pants then that will be a variation so for this screencast we're just going to keep it very simple at the beginner level now the UPC if we click on the I for more information it tells us that buyers often use uh, often search using product identifiers so we require product identifiers to make sure that your listings have maximum visibility in buyer search results. So a UPC is like a special number that may be on a barcode. I personally don't take the time to do that. I try to be as descriptive as possible here in my title. And not everything has a UPC. So if that's the case, you just click on does not apply. Now here you're going to put the condition of your item. Now the top that I have is new with tags. Other options are new without tags, new with defects, say if it is new but it has a little rip in it, or pre-owned which means that it's used. So we're going to go with new with tags. And it tells you there it's brand new, unused, and unworn. It'll give you a little description of what each category should be okay this one says an item that hasn't been worn or previously used etc etc okay now let me go back to one thing because if it is used 
you are able to put in a condition description. So say if this top was used, um, I might say, let's see what I could think of. Hmm, I might say that the top has a zipper in the back with a scoop neckline. Okay, so you can put whatever you want to put in there for condition description. And actually, that's, that's wrong. I was thinking of something else. I was thinking of the regular description. So what actually goes in condition description is um, if there are any defects, you want to point those out. You always, always want to disclose any damages on the item. Um, you'll be surprised that a lot of times people still purchase the items. But if you, do, if you don't disclose it and you sell that, then they could um, call eBay on you and say that you sent them an item that uh, um, it arrived and it was not as described. And that is going to count against you. And you'll probably end up having to give them a refund. And you just don't want to get into that. So if the item had a damage, we might say good condition. small hole on the right sleeve see pics now this is actually how I do my condition descriptions if it's in good condition and it does not have um, any damages then I just leave it at that but if it does have any kind of damage or it could be peeling where you might have a sweater that has those little you know little small rolls on them though that's called peeling um, it may be that there is a little um, a run in the fabric that's considered a damage you always want to disclose those things okay so since that's not the case here we can get rid of that and go back to new with tags now this is the time that you will want to put in your pictures. And the thing that is going to get you uh, the most views and that it may be a, a deciding factor for the potential customer are your photos. Make sure, make sure, I'll say it one more time, make sure that you get the best quality photos that you can take. Make sure that the lighting is good Make sure that you get um, a close-up, that you get details. Um, just think about it. If you were trying to buy this item, what would you want to see? Okay, And you take pictures from different angles. You have to have high-quality photos because um, that gets you a lot more conversions of sales. So another thing is that you are allowed up to 12 photos for free. Take advantage of that. Even if you have to get creative and think of, okay, what other angle can I get just to get another picture out of it, then do it. It's totally worth it because I've been on people's um, sites or on looking at their items and they might have one item and I rarely ever will buy a product from someone who has that few pictures because it does not show you everything that you want to see. And when you buy online, you have to rely on the pictures to to give you information about the product. Okay, it's not like you have it in person. So what you'll have to do is you'll, you'll click add photos. Before we go into this, I wanna say that it is up to you to figure out how you're gonna get your photos to eBay, okay? If you have an iPhone, there is an eBay app that you can download is free. You could take the pictures on your phone and you can upload right from your phone if you want to. Sometimes I do that, but most of the time I use a combination of my cell phone, which is how I take my pictures, and I come on here to type in, you know, little information that is just to me, it's easier to input on my laptop. So with that being said, I'm gonna go into photos. And I'm accessing the photos from my phone. I should do it a different way. Let's see. 
I'm gonna go into my photo stream. And I'm gonna look for the picture of the top. Let's see, here we go. And you just click on it. Now, if you want to do several, on my computer, I have a, a, a Mac. And so what I do is I hit, I press down command. And while I'm pressing down the command button, I choose as many photos as I want. And I just keep clicking. As you can see, the blue box is around it, which lets me know that it is selecting these. And I'm just clicking away. Double check. And then I hit choose. So right now what it's, what it's doing is uploading all of those photos. So that's gonna take a few moments. So while it's doing that, let's continue with the listing. So they're recommending that we use these item specifics, the brand, and that it is a top, let's click on add, and it's, it's saying that it's orange, I don't really consider coral orange, so I'm not going to add that one. Now, the things that have the red asterisks by them are required information. So it was, let's see, the size was a regular. And we said that it was extra small. The style. This particular top. Let's see, sometimes you won't see what you're looking for and you can just hit enter your own. And I'm just gonna put that as a top. Now material. One trick that you can do is you can click on the picture and you see here it's telling me that it's 100% polyester. People will also want to know things like that. Now this is not one that was required but when you're buying something don't you want to know the fabric that it's made out of right I know I do so that's one of the things that I add so I can just scroll down looking for polyester there we go now I didn't agree that it was orange so I'm gonna put coral slash peach Okay, so occasion, uh, there's no pattern there. Pattern is things like if it's geometric, if it has animal print, if they're polka dots. Okay, a theme. A theme would be, you know, does it have flowers? Is it um, a Disney item? None of those things apply. Sleeve style, we're going to say that it's short sleeve. Neckline, we'll call it a classic neckline. And uh, this is not really important. Okay, so let's go back here. Now, as we can see, the very first item is what's going to show up when the, the potential customers are looking. So this is not what I want to show up first. So I'm just going to simply click and drag to reposition these. I'm going to put the tags at the bottom and I'm just again just clicking and dragging. Okay, so some of these are going the wrong way. That's a very simple fix. We go here, we click on this arrow to rotate it. We click Save. The other functions down here, uh, the very first one is to crop it if we want to make something smaller. I rarely use this one. Um, the only time that I will use it, say for instance, I had to hold the fabric here 
and my finger was in the shot, then I would crop it to get rid of it. So if I just wanted this portion to show, then I would crop, let's see. I really don't want to do it because yeah, it's I will have to hit save in order to show you and I don't want to do that. So that's how you crop. This one is to adjust the lighting. This is for the contrast. And this is if you want to do like an automatic um, adjustment to the picture. Okay, so once you're done, you just hit save. Now, word to the wise here, do not do too many filters or adjustments because you don't want to mislead people. And when they get the item, they, they will say this is not the way that this item look, looked in the picture. And you don't want to have those kind of problems. Okay, so we have them in order and we're just going back and we're rotating the images that are going the wrong direction. Making sure to save after every adjustment. So while we're doing that, let's talk about the types of photos that you want to take. You always want a photo of the front of the item. item showing like a zoomed out version and then you want to go in closer and then you want to show the neckline and in doing so you're going to show the stitching and the fabric you want to show the back of the item in a zoomed out version then you zoom in a little more and when i say zoom in that means that you're having to actually go closer or further away with your camera depending on what type of camera that you use if it's in your phone go further or go further further too closer to the item or away keep in mind um, that you really should not use the the sliding zoom I have an iPhone 6s Plus and it kind of distorts the image when I use that so I just manually go closer to zoom and step away to zoom out. So that, that's just a word to the wise. You will want to get pictures from a side, a side angle. Any details that it may have, as you can see that this has uh, the little string up in the back and it has a button you want to show all those little details I always get a picture of the tag showing what the material is made out of and if it has a price tag still attached I get that as proof that it, yes this is still brand new all right so the next thing that we're gonna do is item description that is what I was getting too hasty with up above so an item description, you want to keep it short and sweet. You want to be very concise and descriptive. And I think it's best to use bullets because people don't want to read a paragraph about the item. They just want you to hit the key features. Okay, so if we're looking at this top, we'll call this a satin material because that's, you know, what polyester really is or sat what satin really is. So we're going to say that it's satin. We're going to say things that they're not going to already be able to, to tell by reading these item specifics here. So how about, let's see, lace up back with button. And yeah. I think that pretty much covers it. Oh, another thing. People sometimes like to know the measurements. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just going to make something up here. Top measures, let's say 28 inches 
in the bust. Okay, so the way that you would measure a blouse or a dress, you would lay it flat and you would go from armpit to armpit and then you will double that. And that's the same way that you do, uh, that you measure when you're trying to find the width of the waist. You lay it flat, you go from side to side, and you double it, and that's the waist measurements. And it'll save you some headache if you, if you just go ahead and put that in. Because people will ask you that after you have prepped your items, you package them up, you have them just in your storage, and then they'll ask you a question, and then you have to go, you have to pull it out, you have to measure it, and then message them back and let them know. And nine times out of ten, they won't even um, make the purchase. So you will have done that for nothing when you could just do it in the beginning and save yourself some time and hassle. Now one thing that I want to tell you too that I forgot is if the item is new, just mention that here in the title. So we're going to say, let's see, TB Top NWT. That stands for new with tag. Okay. Now we have told them that it is new here in the condition, but it also helps to let them know in the title as well. So we have our item description and we're going to go down here. Now there are different ways that you can sell things on eBay. You can do a fixed price which say uh, if we want to sell it for $30 and we just say $30. You could also sell it in an auction. Now the cost of an auction to list is more than it is if you do a fixed price. And these are the various time periods that the auctions can last for. With the most popular being seven days, as you can see that is why that is the default. You could even specify when you want or uh, your item to start listing, which is to schedule it. But um, that also costs extra. I just also say start my listings when I submit them. Okay, so let's see. Starting price. If we were going to do an auction and we really wanted the bottom line for this shirt to be $30, we put it here. Now they're going to tell you that the buy it now price must be 30% more than the starting price and they'll give you that automatic price. If it is less than 30, it will not let, let you list it. Okay, some of you may be wondering what buy it now means. What that means is if I have this top on an eBay auction for seven days, Someone may say, you know what, I really want that top, but I don't want to wait, and I don't want to run the risk of maybe being outbid. So what I'm going to do is just buy it now. This would be the amount that they have to pay. And they could go ahead and buy it now, which would end your auction, and it would sell the item. Now beware that when someone buys an, an, an item from you uh, via buy it now, they may take it off the market, but they may pay for it one day later or, or two days later. They have up to two days to pay for it. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's go back and let's change this to a fixed price so we can see what that looks like. All right, so the choice is here vary from three days all the way up to good till council. I think these are pretty much self-explanatory. What good till council means is that this item is going to renew automatically every 30 days until it sells or until you decide that you no longer want to try to sell it and you take it off of eBay which will show as a completed item. Okay. Uh, I've read that there are advantages and disadvantages. One advantage that I can tell you myself for good till canceled is that you don't have to continue to 
relist or sell as similar every so often. It, it will automatically do it for you. And you're not going to be charged until you sell the item. Okay. So it's up to you. 30 days is about, I would say the, is the norm. You want to give it some time to sell. Three days, if it's a, an item that's not in high demand, it's probably not going to sell within three days. Even if it is in high demand, you would probably be selling it um, as an auction and you will probably even want to give it more than three days because the more eyes you can get on your product, the more bids you could get. Okay, so in a fixed price listing, I recommend going with either 30 days or good till cancel. Another benefit that I have heard about the 30 days listing is that it, when it renews, it's going to show up like it's new. And so that is going to be flagged as new and more people gravitate to new listings sometimes. And that's just one little perk. Okay, so we have fixed price, good till canceled. And we said that we wanted our bottom line to be $30. That's how much we want to sell it for. So that's the buy it now price. Now this feature is best offer. Best offer means that the buyer can make an offer to you. I have to say that it was years, years um, into using eBay that I even knew that best offer existed. And after I found out, I felt like an idiot because I probably had purchased items for full price that I could have had with the with the seller for. Okay, so once you hit this. It is going to ask you about what you will accept okay what I like to do is I like to set an automatic minimum so if I'm selling the, this top for $30 if I want it for $30 and let's see I'm gonna say uh, you know what if they offer me 25 I can live with that so if that if the seller automatically I'm sorry if the seller offers me $25 then automatically eBay is going to accept the offer on my behalf okay now if I knew that I actually wanted 30 as my baseline then what I should do is I should overprice this by maybe $5 or however much room you want to give the person to haggle with you. It's pretty much just a psychology thing. Keep in mind though that if you outprice yourself here, even if you're willing to take this amount, you could still beat yourself out of a sale. So don't price it too high even if you're willing to take lower because you'll run away some potential customers. Maybe people like me who didn't pay attention that it's going to be a best offer. All right. Now, this button here lets you automatically decline offers that are lower than whatever. To me, this is more of a negative connotation, so I like to go with what I automatically accept. And if someone comes to you and if they accept, if they offer more than this, then you have you know the option to take that. You can take it. And I think it automatically takes it. But if they offer less, what it's going to do is send you a message and you get to counter their offer and you, they get three chances to counter what you're countering and you go back and forth. Now here is the quantity you put how many items you're selling. So going back to variations, if we had a variation of two exact pants but they were different in color we probably will put a quantity of two here all right sell as a lot this is what you would select if you have more than one item that you're selling as a package set so I just sold some of my kids old clothes so they couldn't no longer fit 
and it was four pairs of pants. So I sold as a lot and I would put four items in the lot. All of those are shipping together. That's why it's called a lot. Do not get this confused with variations. Variations means that it's going to show up in the listing as a quantity of two. So if one sells, it's going to say there's one more left. They're not selling together. They're selling separately, but they're listed together. That's the difference between variant variations and lots. <coughs> okay, excuse me. So next. These are things that I don't use. Private listing allows buyers to remain anonymous. Um, I'm not selling anything that's so precious that somebody would, you know, not want to know that they, that want to know, let other people know that they purchased it. If you would like to, um, give a portion of your sales to some charity, then you can click on this and you can specify the amount and the organization and then the customer will see that. And it's a little perk. They may feel good about buying from you because you're giving back to charity. Now here, the PayPal information. Nine times out of ten, you're going to be set up with PayPal for your eBay account. You're going to make sure that you put in your PayPal email, whatever email is linked with your PayPal account. That's how you're going to get paid. Now this says require immediate payment with buy it now. I always use this, but let me just tell you that even if you have this checked and you're doing an auction and someone buys the item through auction, this is going to be null and void because they'll still have up to two days to pay you. Okay. Now, if you're doing a fixed payment, a fixed um, selling, fixed price selling, then this will, um, it will apply if you check it. That means that if they put this in their cart, they're going to have to go ahead and pay for it in order to hold that item, to get that item. By them simply putting the item in their cart, it's not going to uh, reserve it for them. So they have to pay for it if they want it. Additional checkout instructions. I don't use that, but if you wanted to put something in there, um, you could. Now, sales tax, this is up to you. In your state, you may be required to collect a sales tax or you may want to do that. So you choose your state and you put your percent in here. Shipping and handling. These are things that I think of more for a big business, small business, or people who are selling as a hobby or selling to just make a couple extra bucks. They probably don't use these things. I'm definitely not going to charge my customer shipping and handling costs. I'm just happy that they're making a purchase from me. Here at return options, you have the option to sorry to accept returns and if you do they want to know the time frame okay so after receiving the item the buyer should contact you within 14 to 60 days whichever you choose most of my items have a 30-day money-back guarantee okay so the refund will be given as and these are your options I choose money back. Other options are money back or replacement is the buyer's choice. Then you have money back or exchange is also the buyer's choice. It's up to you. Now, return shipping will be paid by, and these are your options, buyer or seller. Okay, I choose the buyer because keep in mind that I have purchased products supplies I have spent my gas to go and take these to the post office I have spent time to 
package their item and to take it to the post office. So they're going to have to be responsible for shipping that item back should they decide they don't like it. And this is where being as detailed as possible in your item description, in the item specifics, and in the pictures comes into play. You want to leave no room for error, no room for misinterpretation. Okay? So, let's see. Additional return policies. My return policy is pretty lengthy. Um, what I say is that I just re reiterate that they have 30 days to contact me uh, after they receive the item, items that are on my clearance rack or in my clearance bin do not qualify. Uh, what else do I say? I tell them that, that the buyer is responsible 100% for the shipping back and that their money will be refunded via PayPal within whatever time frame. So you, you want to be very specific about your return policy here. Okay, and I also tell them what my restocking fee is. And then I come down here and I select my restocking fee. And again, this is just because I am not a big business and I just, you know, I have to pay for my supplies and I've used my supplies to ship their item. So it's only fair that a portion of that should stay with me to recoup my cost. Okay. And I just want to say that I rarely ever have returns. And most other sellers, if they're in good standing and they're worth their, their salt, neither do they. You can always choose to not accept returns. That's an option as well. All right, so we've covered a lot. We're almost done, and I know it seems like a lot, but I promise the more that you do the listing process, the faster you'll get, the more efficient you'll get. You'll find ways to shortcut, um, but it's just you have to go through the process first. Now, one thing that I do, like I told you before, let's see, for returns on another uh, Word document, I have all these things already typed out. And so what I'll do is I'll just go and cut and paste, and I'll paste it right where it belongs, okay? So those are some of the things that I've learned to shave time off the listing process. Now, here we have the shipping. This is something that was very confusing to me early on. So I'm just going to take the, the mystery out of it for you. You can charge your customers a flat rate. You can let the weight, uh, the weight dictate the shipping cost. If you're shipping big items, you will use freight, which I know nothing about. So I never ship anything that heavy or you can do no shipping local pickup only. This is something that um, I probably would never use because if I could just have them pick it up locally, then I would not bother with eBay because I would just list it for free on um, sites such as Craigslist or Facebook. They have different pages where you can list things. Um, they also have the, the marketplace now. So I always choose calculated. So I click on calculate the shipping. All right, so here we go. If you are using a poly mailer, which is like one of those little plastic envelopes, um, then nine times out of 10, you're gonna go with this, package or thick envelope. This is the only option out of type that I ever use whether it is a priority box, whether it is a smaller poly mailer or a little bit bigger box, I use package or thick envelope. Now I will have a link to a previous article that I did about free shipping supplies supplied through the United States Postal Service and the link to the company that I get my poly mailers from here on eBay for uh, cheap. Okay, so dimensions, most of the time, 
after you have listed a lot of things, this is going to pre-populate for you. It really doesn't matter what you put in here. So I kind of just go with what I can remember one of the sizes being. And it's probably wrong, but again, it doesn't matter. Now, wait, you will have to have a, a postal scale, okay? So say, for instance, that top is 13 ounces. Boom. Say, for instance, the top was one pound and 13 ounces. There you go. This is just to give you um, a reference point. But I always, always, always weigh every single item because I want to know exactly what the weight is. I don't want there to be any surprises for me or uh, especially not for my customer after they have paid. Okay, so we're going to say there's 13 ounces after we've weighed it. This is my zip code where it's shipping out of, and this is where it's going to, okay? You don't have to put anything here because you don't know where it's going. You're just listing it now. It hasn't been sold. So calculate shipping. This lovely feature pops up. It's a shipping calculator. It just recaps the information that you put in. Just glance over and make sure it's correct. And the ways that it ships with through eBay is the USPS, FedEx, or UPS. USPS is going to be the cheapest way. And when you're shipping, you should always ship through eBay because you get a discounted rate. And once they scan your item at the post office, it automatically uploads the tracking information for your customers. And again, this will save you a lot of headache for if a customer uh, files a complaint or says, hey, I haven't got my package yet, you can quickly go in and check it. And you can also say, hey, you can go in and check it and see that it's, you know, it's so-and-so or whatever. So you're going to go with the online rates because you're doing this online. And these are your options. Economy delivery, standard delivery, expedited delivery. The cheapest choice is always going to be standard. Okay. If your item weighs 16 ounces or less, this standard delivery option will always show up. And it's, it's USPS first class package because we chose USPS. So it just tells you that this is the discount that you're receiving by purchasing your postage through eBay. You're getting 9%. Okay, so you just simply click on that. And it shows up here. And then you can click Offer Shipping Services. Now before I do that, I just want to do some different scenarios. Say, for instance, the weight of this top was uh one pound and 13 ounces okay so let's go back and change the weight all right online rates again it automatically is default defaulted to usps every time so as you can see that standard delivery has disappeared because the weight is over the standard delivery first class um, limit. So now these are your options. Hmm, what's a girl to do? Well, what you will want to do is if you have the free supplies through the United States Postal Service, the number one that I use from them is the priority mail padded flat rate envelope that envelope is a poly mailer and it has the bubble wrap padding inside of it and it's free to you as long as you ship via priority mail and that is the most economical um, way to ship okay well you may say well what about you know a priority mail flat rate envelope that's even cheaper yes but the thing is that's going to be a paper envelope do you want to ship 
a $50 blouse in a paper envelope? No. You're going to want to ship it in an envelope that is made out of poly, whatever that stands for, some type of plastic that is pretty much indestructible. It's going to take some bumping and some, uh, you know, poking and the contents are still going to arrive the way that you put them in there. Okay, this is the only one that I use besides Priority Mail, just the regular Priority Mail. When I use this one is when the item is too big to fit in the padded mailer. So I would then have to use a Priority Box or just a regular box, whatever kind of box. Okay, another tip here, these boxes are also free from the USPS and can be delivered right to your door. They come in different sizes. Again, check out the link I'm going to include in the post, okay, or below the video. So those are the options that I use. And really, if you're selling clothes and shoes, you should only have to use Priority Mail or uh, the f padded flat rate. And flat rate means that whatever you can fit in that bag and close up in that bag is going to be $6.50. Okay? If it weighs less than uh, 16 ounces, then chances are you're not going to be using this. Ship it first class so that you save money, that you make money more money and you make a sale that way and your customer is saving money. I always pass on the savings. Okay, so we're back here. Top is only 13 ounces and 388. So we're gonna click on that. And this you can just use a regular poly mailer. As I mentioned before, I buy them about a hundred in a pack for maybe four bucks or so. They come in various sizes. I'll um, put a link here again to the ones that I use and you can kind of see. You may want to use those sizes. You may want to go with something smaller or bigger. So after we're done, we click offer shipping services. Another tip, I could if I wanted to choose more of these multiple ones let's see hmm. there we go so a customer may be willing to pay more to get it faster one of the things that i pride myself on is uh that i ship my items out very quickly and if you look in the testimonials the feedback on my ebay store page you'll see that most of the people are saying this shipping was super quick that's because I ship within one day and depending on the time if I get an order I might take it to the post office that same day so with that being said I don't use I don't even give an option for more expensive shipping because I know that I'm going to to, to get that shipped out to the post office within one day, okay? So that that is really a waste of money to my customer because it's gonna get there quickly no matter if I ship it first class or not. And sometimes it's better to give uh, the least amount of options. You don't wanna overwhelm your customer. Okay, so that takes us back here. And it has put the information in, shipping first class. I like to offer local pickup. Uh, just, you know, thinking, hey, someone may see it um, on my website or something like that. And they might say, hey, you know, I, I want to buy this, but I just want to pick it up locally. So that way they're not charged shipping. Okay. Now, if you want to offer free shipping, knock yourself out that is a whole nother conversation about whether or not you should use free shipping that you have to pay for but your your customer doesn't it's up to you i don't use free shipping 
Okay, so we said that we're not gonna do any handling costs, combined shipping discounts. I really have not gotten this to work correctly for me and it's kind of glitchy and I don't use it. So what I normally do is I'll put a little note in my listing, let my customers know I can combine shipping for multiple items if you let me know before you make the purchase. Okay, because they could send you a message via um, eBay and you'll get that message and you'll say, oh, okay, well, let me go and work something out for them. And that's also another video. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Now, sell internationally. eBay has a global shipping program that you can ship to people in different countries. They have to pay the additional shipping cost. It's not on you. And you'll be shipping to a warehouse in Kentucky, I believe. I have um, I have shipped internationally. One time there was an issue with that fulfillment center shipping out something to the customer that I didn't even ship to them. And so I was able to keep uh, the sale cost and they had to reimburse the customer because it was their mistake. And I want to say that that has happened to me twice. So I'm not a big fan of the global shipping program for that reason. <clears throat> okay, so again, the shipping information was pre-populated. We don't have to do anything here, just double check. And here we are, we're to the end. It's done. There's nothing left to do but to click on list item. And as you can see, the fees that you're going to be charged to list are zero. <coughs> now, you will be assessed a fee, which is called um, the final, I think it's called a final fee or something like that. If you make the sale on this item, then eBay is going to get a percentage of your selling price, whatever the selling price is. I believe it's anywhere from one to three percent and you're also going to have to pay PayPal a percentage as well. So altogether I would say it's no more than five percent but it may be about four percent depending on what type of plan you have with eBay, whether you have a store and you get discounts or if you receive some type of promotion for a free listing. Okay, so the listing is free, but you're going to have to pay a, a percentage of your selling price. Now, if we want to make sure that this looks right before we list it, we're going to hit preview listing. This is how it's going to show up. Everything's in order. You can see the image if you click on it. If you click on it. If you click on it, I don't know why it does that sometimes, but we're just going to go and hover over and as you can see, the images change. Now, one thing that I did forget to mention here is the background. You need to make sure that you have a, a nice background. It could be a, a white sheet, a neutral color. Some people get fancy and they order the backdrops from eBay or Amazon. There's a plethora of different designs that you can choose. Whatever your backdrop is, make sure that it's, it's, it's clean, it's neutral, it's plain. Because you don't want the focus to be on the background, you want it to be on the item, on the product. Okay. So, let's see what else I can tell you here. This is just a recap of everything that we entered in during the listing process. This is what the customer sees when they click on your product. They see the category, the title, item condition, the price. Whatever you selected, if it's buy it now, it's gonna show. Okay, if you select it to have best offer, then they'll have a button that says make offer. They, 
they will click that and they'll make you an offer. You can either accept it or counter it or decline it altogether. The customer can add this to the cart, to their cart, or they can add it to their watch list. The watch list is they're keeping their eye on it. They're not ready to buy it quite yet. They may not have gotten paid yet, or they may just be thinking on it. It's like putting it in, uh, let's see, on hold. And then they'll able, they're able to go back and to take it off of hold and say, you know what, I changed my mind, or go ahead and say, I'm, I'm ready to get it and throw it into the cart. So, these are just my store categories. You won't have that. Shipping and payment. It's going to say that the item location is wherever you wherever you are or wherever you have put the information in. That's where shipping from. And they will give them, let's see, an estimate, which is not going to show up here because I would have to put in my zip code. Okay. But they'll be given an estimate. It has your return policy, the types of payments that you accept, which nine times out of ten is going to be PayPal. Pretty much everyone who shops online has a PayPal account these days. And it says that immediate payment is required for this item. And that was our, um, our choice because we don't want to have the item taken off the market and then it, you know, just not get paid for while someone else could possibly have purchased that already. So when we're, we're done and we say, yep, this is good, we just close that out. And it goes back. Now, if for instance you only got halfway through the listing process, you can click save and continue later. And then it will save it and close it out. And you'll be able to find it in your drafts. And that is another page, okay? And another video. The last thing that I want to let you know is that you can list when you're ready okay i'm not going to list it here because this was just an example but i hope that you have learned a lot the basics of how to list your stuff on ebay if you have any questions please feel free to email me at tequila at southern twain.com southern with just a you you can also leave a comment don't forget to like, to subscribe if you're watching this from YouTube, and to share either way.